Grand Bahamians urge to seize spin-off opportunities to come with Carnival's new cruise port. Another major cruise line staging a two-day fair on Grand Bahama. And police officers engaged in debate. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shishina Roll Farkerton. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping News Minister of State for Grand Bahama delivering a forecast of potential economic growth for the Grand Bahama economy at the 2019 Grand Bahama Business Outlook Seminar today. The one-day parley opened this morning on Grand Bahama at the Grand Lucayan Resort and scores of persons from the business community turned out for this event. Italia Hall reports. The government is also excited to continue its efforts. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, delivering the keynote address. He provided those in the business community with unemployment statistics on Grand Bahama, which he says is under 12 percent for the first time since 2008. He also gave an update on the sale of the Grand Lucayne Resort, adding that the government is on track with its commitment to sell and oversee the redevelopment of that hotel property. There are some very, very exciting proposals which have the potential to bring thousands more job opportunities, hundreds of ownership opportunities, thousands more airlift passengers, and literally millions more cruise passengers. There are proposals that can truly transform Grand Bahama as we know it. We are in line with our original commitment to use this as an opportunity to create a unique destination and not just sell a hotel. The minister says the West End project is progressing as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to closely monitor Old Bahama Bay and the future development of the Old Gin property. The property is in what we believe to be a transition period with multiple owners and unfortunately court actions, which has led to the reduction in some of their services. However, there still remains very engaged and willing purchasers who intend to proceed with the development. We therefore are very hopeful that this development will soon begin to breathe new life into West End community. As for the new Carnival cruise port that is set to be constructed in East Grand Bahama, he says the port is expected to bring in some 12,000 passengers daily compared to the 4,000 to 6,000 that the island currently welcomes a week. We expect Carnival's activity and some hiring to start very shortly. We hope that by the summer we will see the hundreds of construction jobs as it is anticipated that onshore construction work will be performed by Bahamian contractors. We expect that there will be approximately 1,000 jobs after the completion. He says now is the time for Grand Bahamians to plan for the mega project. You should now be thinking about new restaurants. You should now be thinking about that Junkanoo Shack. You should now be thinking about the retail stores. You should be thinking about the food and beverage logistics that has to happen to feed 12,000 people on a daily basis. The minister maintains that the island will not be successful if Grand Bahamians believe that Carnival will do everything. Instead, he says Grand Bahamians must stand up and seize the opportunity. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Well, Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, also telling those in attendance that the government is continuing the mission to transform Grand Bahama into a technology hub. Thompson says GIBC Digital is now working with the government to assist with their efforts to build a tech-skilled workforce. He also announced that draft legislation is being finalized to create a special visa, the BH-1 visa. This would be particularly for companies seeking to relocate their development teams to the Bahamas to retain their specialized talent. The committee proposes that through the immediate population growth that we need in Grand Bahama, that we will see significant economic impact. 
This will also be done under the Commercial Enterprise Act. And under the Commercial Enterprise Act, any company that is approved must provide a plan on how they will increase training for Bahamians. Minister Thompson says the government has approved a newly formed medical school that will also be constructed in Freeport. The newly formed medical school, made up of former Ross University professionals and others, is now continuing their approval processes and hope to welcome students in September of this year. The developers intend to begin the first phase with the construction of a $10 million building. We are informed that this project will provide 400 full-time jobs and a construction phase provide 200 jobs. The developer estimates the economic impact for each student at $25,000 per annum when you take into account rent, shopping, food, and transportation. In other news discussions on the pros and cons of the World Trade Organization taking place this evening at the Jack Hayward Gym, the dialogue organized by the Minister of Finance, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, will feature experts in the field. The DPM, in an interview with the ZNS News, noted that an educational forum is in an effort to engage the public in meaningful discussions on what the WTO is all about. A lot of misinformation out there about what the, our, our, our um, ambition to join the WTO will mean for the Bahamas, uh, uh, how it will affect uh, local consumers, how it will affect business in the Bahamas. Uh, and we want to see if we can help in, in educating people so they can have a more uh, informed discussion uh, about the pros and the cons. Um, you know, we, we, we're not going to uh, try to, to uh, browbeat anybody. Uh, on, on, and taking a view, uh, there are, there are those uh, um, interested persons who, for reasons that are not based upon fact, that are not based upon any um, um, uh, substantive uh, uh, point, but based upon sensationalism, that is trying to cloud the, the discussion and try to cloud the the uh, the, the, the uh, whole objective. Uh, we want to see if we can dispel some of that, so that people can make informed decisions. The DPM says that the goal is to ensure that Bahamians are educated on this issue so they are and they can make informed decisions. Have a substantive discussion with the chief negotiator and with our trade consultant who are very knowledgeable and able to answer any questions that they have. Uh, from a policy position, uh, certainly I will try to help. Uh, to, to uh, um, answer any questions that may arise and I encourage them. Uh, all those who have a question about WTO, how it will impact them, how it will impact the, the economy of the Bahamas, and how it will impact the governance of the country, to come out, ask your questions, so that you can hear it from the horse's mouth, what is intended and what the uh, consequences uh, will be for us joining WTO. And, and, and you know, I, I, I want to say, you know, for all those who want or seek to inform, be reasonable. Uh, um, you know, don't seek to sensationalize or, or uh, play to people's base fears. Be reasonable, come out, ask your question, get the facts uh, so that we can all be informed and together as a country we can make the right decision for the betterment of all of our people. Meanwhile, a major cruise line, Royal Caribbean, hosting a two-day job fair on Grand Bahama. The cruise line is in search of a number of employees to work at their location at Coco Key. As you'll hear in this report, the job fair is taking place at the Labor Department on Grand Bahama. Grand Bahamians lined up to fill out applications for an opportunity to relocate to Coco Key, a private island exclusively for Royal Caribbean guests, which features a number of activities for guests to enjoy. Human Resources Manager Antonique Smith says she was impressed with the persons who attended day one of the job fair. So we're here uh, looking for persons who are passionate and friendly and committed and excited about joining us on this opportunity. Uh, we're looking for persons with experience in the cooling world for our food and beverage team. We're looking for our lifeguards to join our water park, aquatics and recreation team. We're looking for dive instructors and aquatics guides and drivers and the full gamut of qualified professionals that can help us make perfect day a thing. Royal Caribbean has owned Coco Key for some 30 years and the major cruise line is now in the process
process of investing millions of dollars on more activities and entertainment for guests. She says those who are hired will truly be working in paradise. It is a beautiful beach environment and we are refining it and enhancing it a little bit more with a wonderful water park experience as well. So we are a bit secluded. Our nearest mainland is Great Harbor Key um, and just getting in to work is an adventure I like to say. Um, so you have your 20 minute flight from Nassau to Great Harbor Key and then you have a 10 minute boat ride um, to get to Coco Key. So that in itself is exciting. And while relocation is not easy, she shares what those who make the sacrifice can expect. So, of course, the nature of our environment will require that our employees live and work with us. We have recently built accommodations, actually, that are just about five or six months old. Um, they're very nice. I think myself and our team like to refer to it like it, it feels like a hotel. So they're very nice accommodations. And we also handle the travel for our employees as well to and from their home airport. We of course provide meals three times a day and essentially take care of all of all of the necessities right down to Wi-Fi, which is a necessity today. The Labor Department is facilitating this two-day job fair, Assistant Director of Labor, Janet Russell. As you know, the, the economy is not doing too well. A lot of persons are on the unemployment line. And with opportunities like this, we welcome this chance to um, provide employment for persons who are in need. And if you are interested in applying for a position at Coco Key, the final day of the job there is Friday at the Labor Department. Switching gears now, it is the second symposium in a series of national conversation about responsible gaming and addiction awareness. On Friday, the Grand Bahama Health Services, in conjunction with the Bahamas Gaming Operators Association and Sandlin's Rehabilitation Center, will host a gambling one-day seminar to educate the public on the effects of a gambling addiction. Chief Executive Officer with the Bahamas Gaming Operators Association, Gershon Major, is inviting the Grand Bahama community to attend. We're targeting the general public, and there are a number of persons within the, the community of Grand Bahama who game. They have family members, they have friends and loved ones, and we want to make sure that they are aware that this is a form of entertainment that should be done in moderation. The same way you budget for a dinner and a movie is the same way you should budget for this particular form of entertainment. But we also recognize that there are those who may be chasing losses or who may be chasing wins. And they may be prone to not game in moderation. And so for those who may be at risk in becoming compulsive or pathological uh, gamblers, we want to make sure the safety net is there to help those individuals and all their loved ones. A number of persons are slated to speak at this event, including Dr. David Allen, psychologist, Dr. Daphne Adderley, Sands, psychiatrist, among many others, clinical psychologist and international certified addiction professional, as well as Paulette Bow, chairperson of the Gambling Addiction Program at Samblin, says this event is for the entire family. It's important that the family members come and learn because then they'll be able to recognize some of the signs that they have to look for and they will learn some of the things that they need to say to those people. Of course, it's paramount that we get the person that is addicted to realize that they have a problem. And as long as soon as they realize, the sooner they realize that, okay, we're, we're doing this, we are compulsively doing this gaming but there are some negative consequences. When we show them the balance and they realize that the negative consequences are outweighing the positive consequences, hopefully that will hit home to them that they need to do something about it. But an addiction is an addiction, whether it's gambling, alcoholism, or other whatever else substance, as long as it's, you're out of control and it takes over your body, you're no longer in a position to be able to deal with that addiction. So it not everybody will be able to do it on their own, and they require help, and they need help like as soon as possible, okay, because it can damage any as every aspect of their lives. And getting back on track could be much more difficult than if you decide to come, you know, sooner the better for help. Help is available, and of course, we all are delighted to be able to assist person with this addiction, because it don't just affect you, it affects your family and, of course, the community at large. Stay with us, there's more news right after the break.